In this problem, we are given the following circuit diagram here. We are also given that our I of G is equal to 15 cosine 10,000 T amps, and this is a sinusoidal. We are also told that we need to find the average power absorbed by the 20 ohm resistor, and this is what we're going to be finding in here. To start this problem off, we know that there's going to be some current flowing through here. But before we find this current, we need to find the voltage so that we can put it over the resistance. That way, if we give voltage over resistance, we can find our current. So to find voltage, we are going to do the node voltage analysis, and we're starting at this node right here. If we know that we have our I of G current going this way, our I delta is going away. And our I delta will also have a plus minus V delta. We are going to be finding the voltage here. And then we also have some voltage going this way because it's going into the positive and out of the negative and it's 10 times r i delta so now we can start writing the equation for this when we write out our sinusoidal function it'll be a 15 with zero degrees and if we convert this to the rectangular form it'll just be 15 and it's going into our node so it's going to be a negative 15. Now I am writing this out and I've come across this capacitor right here and we need to convert this into a form where we have the J so we can put it in the rectangular form and look at all impedances together. So when we're rewriting this for a capacitor we are going to say that our X of C is equal to a negative J divided by our omega C. We know that our omega is given in our I of G our omega is 10,000, so we're going to have a negative 1 divided by 10,000, which is also divided by our C, and this is the capacitance, which is 2.5. And since we have a micro farads in here, we need to convert this just to farads. So we're going to have 10 to the negative 6. This is going to give us a capacitance of negative J times 40. For the next part of our node voltage method, we are going to have our V0 because this is the voltage. And then since voltages are in parallel, we are going to have this next part plus, and since this voltage is right after the other, we are going to have a minus. And again, since our voltage is going into our node, it's going to be a negative. So it's a minus negative 10 I delta, and this is over the, and the impedance here is our 1 millihenry conductor in our 20 ohm resistor. We need to convert our inductor just as we did the capacitor. So for this, we're going to write it as our XL, and that is equal to the J times our omega times the inductance. So we will have 10,000 times our 1 millihenrys, and a millihenry is just 10 to the negative cubed, and this will give us a J times 10. And this is the current that is flowing through this specific part. We have to remember this because we are going to need to solve for this later to get the actual current flowing through our 20 ohm resistor. And now we can set this equal to zero. I'm going to move our constant 15 over to the right side, and then I'm going to multiply everything by 10. That way we can get rid of these zeros in the denominator. I'm also going to flip the J on top, and when we do that, we're multiplying it by a negative one, or we're making our J a negative. And since we have a negative in the denominator, it's going to be a negative times a negative, which gives us a positive. So we're going to have a positive J times our V delta over 4 for this first part. This next part, we have the V delta plus 10 times our I delta. And this is going to be over the... In this next part, we have our V delta plus 10 times our I delta, which we're going to substitute in a second, and this is all over our 2 plus J impedance. For our I delta, we're going to be looking at this part right here. We know that our I delta is equivalent to the voltage, which is our V delta, over the impedance, which is our negative J times 40 for the capacitor. Now we can rewrite this by flipping the J up top, and this is going to give us a J times our V delta, and this is over 40. Now we can plug this back into our equation. And lastly, we cannot forget about the 15. It's going to be a 150 again because we multiplied everything by 10. Now I'm going to rewrite this. However, I'm going to multiply everything by a 2 plus j. That way we can factor out that on the denominator. Now I'm going to simplify this further by multiplying everything by 4. 
and also 2 plus j. That way we can factor out everything on the denominator. I'm also going to divide this 10 with our 40 right here, and that's going to give us a 1 over 4. And after we do that, we're going to get this equation. So now we can add all of these together and then divide both sides by them. That way we can get our V delta by itself and then solve for it. Also, we are going to need to convert this part and this into the polar form before we divide it. To convert something to the polar form, to find our Vmax, we need to find the square root of our number squared plus our imaginary number squared. And to find our theta, we need to have the tangent negative one of the imaginary number divided by the real number. After we do all that, we are going to get our V delta as this. And then remember that we are going to divide the first numbers and then we are going to subtract the denominator from the numerator of our angles. And then after we do that, we are going to get this as our polar equation. If we wanted to write it as our rectangular equation, which could be useful, we are going to take our number and then in parentheses, we will have the cosine of our angle plus j times the sine of our angle. And if we do this, we are going to get that our V naught is also approximately 301 with an angle of approximately negative 98 degrees. And that will be our V delta. Now we are going to use our V delta that we just found to find our I delta. Once we have found this, we can plug it back into this equation because we know this is the current flowing through this entire right side. And if we find the current flowing through the entire right side, we can use it in the formula. And the reason why we're gonna plug it back into this equation is because this is the equation for the current flowing through this entire part right here. And since it's all in series, we know that this is going to be the same current throughout. It's the same current, the max current flowing through our 20 ohm resistor. Then we can plug it into the equation which is in the chapter notes, link below the like button in the description, where we get our Imax and plug it into a formula with our resistance to find the power. I also made a mistake right here. I accidentally put the angle sign when this is not an angle, this is actually a J. So what we should have in here is a minus J times 98, not an angle because this is the rectangular form for it. And we're going to use the rectangular form when we plug it into our I of delta. We are going to factor in the J outside of the V naught. So we're going to have a 98, because the J's are going to combine, plus a J times 301, and this is all over the 40. And if we divide this out, we are going to get approximately 2.45 plus J times our 7.525. And this is the rectangular form for our I delta. However, we also should put it in polar form, just in case we need that too. So to put it in the polar form, we are going to use these equations right here. And that's going to be the polar equation for our I delta. Now we need to plug it back into this equation right here, again to find the current flowing through the right side of our problem. When we add together, it's easiest to do it in the rectangular form. So I'm going to plug in the rectangular form for our V delta, and that is this right here. I'm going to combine the negative signs as we have done before, and that's going to give a positive 10 times the rectangular form of our I delta, and this is the rectangular form right here. Well, if we multiply 10 into here, this is just going to be a 200. This is going, now if we multiply a 10 in here, this is going to be a 24.5 times a J plus a J times a 75.25. And that is with the 10 factored in. And this is all going to be over the resistance, which we know to be 20 plus J times 10. In the numerator, we are just going to add like terms. And after we combine like terms, we are going to get this in the numerator. Now what we want to do is switch this to the polar form. That way we can divide these out just as we did in our V delta right here. To switch it to polar form, we are going to use this set of equations right here. Now we have this in our polar form. Remember, we are going to divide the first numbers and then we're going to subtract the denominator from the numerator in our second part. And from this, we're going to get approximately 15 with an angle of negative 31. And remember, this is the current that is flowing through the entire right side. 
and the current because it's in series is the same throughout. So this was the current that we were looking for. Now we can plug it into our power average equation. We're going to use this formula right here. However, we are not going to be using it with voltage. And instead of having our Vmax right here, it's going to be our Imax here. We know that our Imax, because this is in polar form, is the first actual number. Because if we look back at the polar form, which we have converted it to, our V of M, or in this case our I of M, is equal to 15. So we can plug this into a calculator as 15 divided by the square root of 2. Now if we plug this into our power average formula, we are going to get that this is all squared and it's being multiplied by the resistance. And we know we want to find the power average at the 20 ohm resistor. So we are going to multiply it by the 20 ohms of resistance. And this will give us approximately 2,129.4 as our answer to this problem. And that will give us the answer of 2,129.4 as the power average over the 20 ohm resistor. And that is how you would go about solving this problem. If you want more introduction to circuit analysis, there is a playlist with over 100 videos and notes in the description below the like button covering the entire coursework for this class.